This angle is 35 degrees with the vertical, uh, and our vector here, um, A, has a length of 5. Please break this into components. We have to draw the right triangle for the components using the overall vector as the hypotenuse, where the legs should be parallel to our axes. And we put the right triangle underneath the overall vector so we can include the angle that we were given. If we had put the right triangle above the vector, it wouldn't include this 35 degree angle. And that would make the problem just a little bit more difficult. So let's do it this way. Always label the sides. This is a sub x because it's parallel to the x-axis. And this is a sub y because this vertical side is parallel to the y-axis. Here's the side we were given and the angle that we're focusing on. The vertical side is adjacent and the horizontal side here is opposite. We need to figure out the adjacent side using the hypotenuse, which we were given, and should we use the sine or the cosine? Well, cut. Cosine tells you about the adjacent side. Here, we're taking the cosine of 35 degrees. The adjacent side is a sub y, but that's just the length, so we use a dot. The hypotenuse is 5, and we still have to deal with the cosine of 35. 5 times cosine 35 is 4.1. That's still only a magnitude, so we keep the dot. And now we write a sub y without the dot to indicate that now on our own steam we're going to figure out the sine. Oh, well, it looks like uh, we're running into a little roadblock here because we forgot something. I forgot to put the arrows on the legs. We have to put arrows on the legs or we can't figure out what the signs of the components are. So let's go back and do that. The overall vector was pointing down and to the right. So the legs should be pointing down and to the right. And now we can see that a sub y is pointing down while the positive direction is up. So a sub y is pointing in the negative direction. a sub y is negative. 4.1. Moving on to the opposite side, which we haven't figured out yet. We know we want to use the hypotenuse, because that's the side we were given. And so, the opposite side comes from the hypotenuse and the sine. The sine of 35 degrees. Now, our label for the opposite side here is a sub x a sub x with a dot, since right now we're just talking about its length. When we're dealing with trig functions, we're just dealing with lengths. The hypotenuse is 5, and we've got the sine of 35. 5 times the sine of 35 is 2.9. Now we should write a sub x without the dot to indicate that we want to figure out now what the sine on the component is. That doesn't come from the trig functions. The trig functions don't tell you what the sign is. Instead, we have to use our positive direction and our arrows. The positive x direction is to the right, and it looks like the x component is pointing to the right, which would make it positive. Now, of course, in regular life, we don't usually put a sign in front of positive numbers. But I hope you're used to the idea that we definitely always put a sign in front of positive numbers in physics. At least any number that could be either positive or negative, we're going to put a sign in front of it. If a number could be either positive or negative, we're going to put a sign in front of it um, uh, when it's positive and when it's negative. Magnitudes are never negative, so we don't need to put a sign in front of them. A sub x equals positive 2.9. The overall vector, remember, never has a sign. Um, so this is just a magnitude, so we don't need to indicate a sign. And remember, it's kind of a matter of taste whether you would put a dot on top of this variable or not. We need two different variables for the components because one variable indicates the magnitude and one version indicates the signed component. Uh, but you don't need to be as careful with the overall vector because there is no signed overall vector. Uh, so we don't necessarily need to put uh, a dot in here to show this is a magnitude because it couldn't be a signed uh, number anyway because it's the overall vector. But it wouldn't be wrong to put a dot in here. If you want to emphasize that this is a magnitude, you could say a dot equals 5. I think either way is okay.
when you have to be careful is when you're working with the components, because the components can be either sine or just magnitudes. So then we definitely need to be careful about using the right symbol. This is another of those somewhat unusual problems where we used the cosine to find the y component. Notice how we used the cosine to find the y component. Now, admittedly, you usually use the cosine to find the x component. But it definitely can happen that sometimes you need the cosine to find the y component. So don't assume. Uh, just work out the details of each problem uh, based on the logic of that particular problem. 